Right, so uh, in this video, we will discuss the next transformation where we are going to um, learn okay, the reflection in coordinate axis. Right, so the next transformation is about reflection. Okay, right, so for reflection, comparatively, it will be more easier or more straightforward where we are having two types of reflection. The first one is if we multiply a negative in front or maybe outside the basic function, then generally it is a reflection of the graph in the x-axis. That means the x-axis here basically will be the mirror, right? And you are going to reflect your graph upside down. That means if let's say originally your graph is above the x-axis, so when you multiply a negative in front of the basic uh, function, then um, that means your graph will be reflected uh, through the mirror of x axis and the line x axis and your uh, graph above the axis will become below the axis now all right simply happen okay uh, in a reverse way okay so this is the first type of reflection where we are having the reflection in the x axis uh. okay so that means your graph is reflected upside down and then for if you are having the negative sign inside the basic function Okay, where you can see that the negative is inside the function fx, then generally this is a reflection also, but it is a reflection in the y-axis. That means this is belongs to left-right reflection. And the y-axis here will be actually your mirror, the line of symmetry or the line of reflection. Okay, so this is what you have for reflection in the coordinate axis. Right, so let's have a look for example 5. Okay, so for example 5, if they give me the original function where fx equals to cos x and then they want us to sketch the following graph for 0 until 2 pi. Okay, so uh, to show the com uh, comparison between the original graph and also the reflected graph, right? Uh, I will draw both graph in the same axis. Okay, so first of all, I will want to draw cos x first from 0 until 2 pi. So for cos x, 0 until 2 pi means that you should have the graph something like this, uh, the shape of the graph something like this, where the maximum value here is a 1, minimum value here is a negative 1, and this particular point here will be 2 pi. Okay, then this is actually pi. Uh. Okay, and now since we are having multiply a negative outside the basic angle, right, Oh, sorry, but outside the basic function, not basic angle. Outside the basic function, the negative is outside the basic curve or basic function, which means that this is actually the reflection in the x axis, or we call it as up, upside down reflection, up down reflection. So if I want to sketch the up down reflection, basically all the positive value for the y, you need to reflect it down, become negative value. So as an example, the first point here, the maximum point is 0, 1, right? And after you multiply a negative at the y value, it will become 0 and negative 1. So this original value is y equals to 1. So multiply it with negative 1 or multiply it with negative, then you will get negative 1. Okay, and then how about for second point here? So for the second point here, you can see that the y value is 0. So 0 multiplied with negative, it is still 0, which means that your refracted graph will pass through this, still this point, 0 and 0, uh, high over 2 and 0. Okay, so the next point will be this one. Okay, so original graph, you are having the minimum value where it is equal to negative 1. So when you take negative 1, multiply with negative, you'll get positive 1. So that means your new graph will be refracted to the value positive 1. So the next point it is still 0 like what I plot here and after that the last point that I'm going to plot is this maximum value is 1 so reflect it downwards huh? to the negative side it will become negative 1. So this is what I have and I will try to connect all the points together. Right, so this purple color graph will be actually y equals to negative cos x, where you can see that I multiply a negative outside the basic function. And the original function is actually y equals to cos x. So if you compare the original graph in red color and also the reflected graph in purple color, right? So they belong to up-down reflection, which means that the value of y will be changing from negative to positive and also from positive to negative. Alright, so this is what we have uh, for the upside, uh, up-down reflection or the reflection through the x-axis. Okay, let's have a look for part B. So for part B, you can see that we want to sketch a graph where the negative is multiplied inside the basic function. 
So to uh, sketch the diagram for neg uh, sorry for the negative value uh, is multiplied inside the basic function, then basically I need to make the axis longer so that I can have this kind of left right reflection. Alright, so for this left right reflection, I need to draw the original graph on the right hand side first from 0 until 2 pi. So again, my original graph for cos x will be something like this. Okay, again, this is the maximum value 1 and the minimum value negative 1. Okay, and after that, uh, what do I need to have is I want to reflect this graph to the left hand side. So this is the original graph on the right hand side of the x axis, uh, on the y of the y axis, and now the y axis will be actually the mirror, okay, for us to have the reflection of the graph to the left. So that means you assume that the line is a mirror, and therefore my graph on the right hand side will be this one. It is still one, okay. Original value x coordinate for this part is pi over two. So when you reflect it to the right hand, uh, to the left hand side, the value will become negative pi over two. That means it will actually affect the value of x axis or x value. Okay, then it is still passing through y equals to zero. Okay, so for this next point here, the x coordinate is pi. Therefore, when you want to reflect it to the negative value of x, it will become negative pi. So this is negative pi. And the minimum value y is still the same, which is the minimum value y, and it is negative 1. So same thing happened for this point now. So for this particular point, it is 3 pi over 2. So when you want to reflect it to the left-hand side of the y axis, then you need to plot the point where it is negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, and lastly, if you want to sketch or plot the last point here, Okay, so you can see that the last point here, this one, it is at 2 pi, right? So I'm having negative 2 pi. And then the last one will be this part on the maximum point here. And then if you try to connect all the points together, your reflected graph will look something like this. So the purple color part will be y equals to cos negative x. And the red color part will be actually y equals to cos x. Okay, so please take note on the left-right reflection and also the upside-down reflection, up-down reflection. All right, so when you multiply negative outside the basic function, it is uh, the reflection through the x-axis. And if you multiply the negative inside the basic function, then basically it will be the reflection um, through the y-axis. Okay, so this is what you have for example 5. You can try to compare these two kinds of reflection on your own. Right, so let's have a look for another example. Okay, so maybe we can discuss this example 6. Okay, so for this example 6, uh, they give us two functions here. Function fx and function gx. And then they want us to describe fully single transformation that maps fx to gx. So from here to here, they are asking for single. So highlight the keyword single. That means when you are trying to explain the transformation, right? There's only one type of transformation involved. Alright, so that's that's the meaning of a single transformation. So to me, I think this is an important word. Alright, so you cannot like separate the transformation into a few different transformations. So they only want a single transformation here. Okay, if you have a look for the single transformation, right? You have to try to um, link how can we change the function fx become function gx. Okay, so you can see that from the formula given, the 2x minus 1 square and 2x minus 1 square are actually the same. The only thing difference is here, okay, where the original function fx is x plus 3 and the function gx is negative x minus 3. And what can I do now is I will try to rephrase and see how can I rephrase my gx uh, into function fx. I realize that if I try to take out both negative here, I'll have a negative in front of the bracket and then I will have x plus 3. And then the bracket at the back, I don't touch it. It is still the same, 2x minus 1 square. And then from here, you can see that the two brackets at the back, it actually belongs to fx. Right, so I can rewrite my gx and uh, become something like this. Uh. 
gx equals to negative fx. Okay, so from here, you can also rephrase it where fx can be written as negative gx. Okay, so when I have fx equals to negative gx, right, what can we see is we actually multiply a negative outside the basic function fx. Okay, therefore, when you have a negative value or negative multiply negative outside the basic function, then this is belongs to reflection. And if you want to explain it in detail, it should be the reflection in x axis. Okay, because you can see very clearly that the negative sign is actually outside the basic function. So when you have a negative sign outside the basic function, it belongs to reflection in x axis or the up down reflection. Okay, so maybe we can have a look for part number B. So this is one example. You could try to rephrase fx and gx in terms of gx or gx in terms of fx. Okay, let's have a look for part B. Okay, so for part B, they give us one equation. And they give us another equation. Okay, so x squared plus 2x minus 5 and also x squared minus 2x minus 5. So they want us to describe fully the single transformation. Okay, so please highlight the word single again. Alright, so for this word single, let us have a look. Huh? How can we try to compare these two functions together? Okay, so I maybe will make the first equation as y1. The second equation as y2. So let's say my y1 is equals to x squared plus 2x minus 5. And then if I try to observe my equation number 2, right, I realize that the center term plus 2x become negative 2x. Okay, when I'm so for this one, positive become negative. But the rest are in front of x squared, it is still x squared. So usually when you're having anything with the power square, they are the same. But with the uh, odd power, x power, y is odd power, right? Okay, with the odd power x, uh, the sign is different. Usually, it is belongs to um, negative x. Uh, x replaced by using negative x. You can have a try and see. Y2 can be written as negative x squared, the whole thing squared, then plus 2, then negative x minus 5. If I try to simplify this one, right, then I can see very clearly that I will get the y2 equation. And if we have a look for detail, the original x, uh, I replace it by using negative x. And you can see that the negative is inside the basic function. That means it is inside, it is together with the x uh, inside the basic function. So when I have a negative inside the basic function, basically this is actually the reflection in y axis or the left right reflection. Okay, so this is how we solve the question that's related to the reflection. You have to try to figure out what's the relationship between the original function and also the later function after the transformation. Okay, yeah, so this is what I want to cover for this video where it uh, talks about the reflection partner in the transformation of graph.